All right, here we go. Another fucking video with this motherfucker. And as we uh, talked about, we have fucking Vincent Crowley here himself from fucking Asheron, the Vincent Crowley band, Infidel Reich, and others. Welcome. Thanks for having me, brother. Yeah, we're definitely glad to have you on here. As you, uh, I'm sure you watched the uh, Asheron video I did the other day. You know, definitely been a, a long time fan of the band. So it's uh, very cool for sure. Absolutely. I, I appreciate the support, man. Well, it's well deserved. You have a, a, a definitely a, a lengthy uh, history in the scene, the industry, whatever you want to call it. Um, before we get into that, if any of you motherfuckers don't know, uh, Vincent Crowley does have a uh, YouTube channel, which if you haven't checked it out, I highly suggest you look at it because it's very cool. It's it's him answering questions and whatnot, but there's also a shit ton of music videos and other stuff. Uh, uh, Vince, if you want to talk a little bit about your channel, whatever you want to say. Yeah, well, I started my channel years ago just to kind of post, obviously, the music videos or some live stuff. And I've noticed with, you know, back in the day, people used to write letters. You know, we had the snail mail and you could answer questions like that. Later, it became email. Now it's all this social media shit. And I do have the Facebook crap, but I, I try not to be on there that much. And I just do the necessities and it, it just, you just get swamped with stuff. So I figured do a series of Q and A's that I could answer on YouTube and have people actually see what's going on and kind of go over old stories and present stuff that's going on and talk about various topics that people want to ask me about. So it's been really cool. It's, it's definitely been an eye opener uh, it, to see all these metal channels out there. Uh, I, I stumbled across yours. Uh, I was watching Justin J dogs uh, channel. And usually in the morning I get up, I do a workout downstairs and I have my TV on and I just w watch whatever. And I heard you coming on screaming. I was like, oh, this shit's fucking awesome, man. That's why I gotta <laughs> check this out, you know? So checked out your band. I really dug it. And then, you know, it, it, along with this, you're linked to other, you know, metal sites. And it gave me a feeling of like back in the old days where we used to, you know, write to each other and, you know, yeah. be in contact and support each other. So this is kind of me giving back to the scene like Dave gave to me, you know. Actually, that's a good point. I know we were talking through email and you what you I think it was a great analogy what you said about how these YouTube channels pretty much are like the old days of the zines. I mean, it's just individuals doing reviews and whatever, but it's just on a video format versus the uh snail mail, snail mail bullshit and doing the zines and whatnot. So it is I, I never really thought about it, but that's an excellent way to put it because it, it truly is. Yeah, I mean it it's the contact, you know, because, you know, there's there's people out there, there's fans, there's bands and stuff. And, you know, they got there's a lot of people out there with attitudes. There's a lot of trolls. There's a lot of assholes that just want to talk shit about the scene. And that's or bands or whatever. We could give two shits about that. I, I think hey, if they want to waste their energy, let them fucking do it. I get a fucking kick out of it. But for the people that are actually trying to support the, the music and and link other like-minded individuals this is a cool way to do it um i i wish more people did it actually because uh information is is controlled now especially on social media yeah. not that youtube is perfect because youtube does censorship too but at least you can get most of your stuff out there and you're not like pushed to the same 20 people all the time like a Facebook or whatever shit that's out there. So I think this is definitely the best way to go. And uh, I implore everybody to, you know, do something if they can. Yeah, it, it really is cool. Cause there, there are some good channels out there and I've met some really cool people that just by, I can watch somebody's video and I can tell, all right, I could probably hang out with this person. This person, I'd probably knock the shit out of them if I was in person. And you can just tell, and there are people like that, but, there are some really cool people and people are very passionate about the music and they like the real stuff, not just a bunch of bullshit. But uh, yeah, actually before we move on about your channel, I know you mentioned you're going to do a, uh, a series of Asheron like history videos, which I I'm looking forward to. I think it's going to be really good. If you want to touch upon that. 
yeah, I, it's going to take a while, but um, my goal is uh, I'm, I'm working with somebody on a book and it's going to be called 30 Years of Pure Hell. And it's basically going to be about my time in Asheron. Now, before that comes out, I would like to kind of document a lot of stuff from the very beginning to the very end and, you know, interview some old members, you know, discuss with some fans what they thought about some stuff, you know, albums and such, and uh, just get a vast kind of history of, of what that band entailed. You know, a lot of people, and like you mentioned, you, you sometimes are into a band when they first come out and then, you know, more bands come out and you might lose touch with what, what they're doing at the time. Cause there's a lot of music out there after rights of the black mass. We did, you know, quite a few albums yeah. after that and, and different fans and different eras and stuff. And, uh, I figured compile it to let people know this is where it started. This is where it ended. You know, it, it it was definitely a evolution of music and sound and everything, but we kind of kept the core roots of what it was meant to be in the first place. Yeah, that that video series would be really cool because uh, Asheron definitely has the lineage to uh, cover that and also enough to cover a whole fucking book. So, yeah, I think that'd be a really cool thing to touch upon because I, most people who are watching this video should probably already know about Ashron, just when I posted that video, tons of people commented how they love Rights of the Black Mass and everybody knows this shit and everybody should know that you were in Nocturnus before this. So you definitely have had some history. So I think it's really cool. And it kind of reminds me of uh, a few years back, Anthrax actually did a, a series of videos kind of like that where they would cover each little 20 minute or 20 minute set video, or whatever, and they would cover each album and the history of it. And I think. In your case, it could be even even more interesting because it's the underground, the real shit. So I think it's a really sm smart and cool idea. I think a lot of people will be very interested to see it. I know I am. That's cool. Yeah, it's it's. I I still get tons of you know, Asheron isn't technically together anymore. I put that to rest in two at the end of two thousand eighteen. Um, I always tell people if there comes a time to you make know, maybe a special recording or release. That's that would definitely I wouldn't have a problem with it. But, you know, as for shows and full length albums, uh, I'm not really interested in doing that anymore. But uh, I definitely get tons of questions about that band. So it, this is kind of just a way to answer those questions and, and, and give people all those stories that they've been wanting to hear. Yeah, it's cool, because uh, prior to you uh, starting doing your newer videos of you talking and whatnot, I had watched your channel before, just watching the concerts and the music videos. So it's very cool. And actually, I have to also say, too, that is very because I'm all about I think extreme music is a very visual medium. And I like that you do music videos. A lot of people think that's corny, but we do them, too. I think it's important when I see a band do a music video. I feel that it truly shows more of their creative uh approach and it tells me that the bands are serious too they're not just putting out a cd with some little piece of shit cover and you put some time into it so i, I definitely uh, applaud you for that because i like that kind of shit yeah i appreciate it. well as you know you know we're not never been on some major label so you know people need to understand when we do videos we do it the old school way we 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 have to bust our asses and, and figure out ways to make it look presentable. And, you know, we don't have the $10,000 budgets that, you know, a label would give us and stuff. We're pretty much do it on, you know, the limited funds and stuff. But, you know, I I agree with you. I always like to see band videos. Um, I mean, even when like st stupid headbangers ball, I mean, it yeah. was cool when you seen, I appreciate headbangers ball just so I could see those morbid angel or carcass or, you know, yeah. it, death videos. And, uh, so I definitely am very much into the video thing. Yeah. I like that. Cause you've done videos for Asheron and also infidel Reich. And, uh, I think even some of uh, Vincent Crowley video as well. Yeah. We, we did one yeah. for uh masquerade du macabre. Yeah. And, uh, actually, uh, the gentleman, uh, Curtis, uh, Carl Assault, who did that video and a lot of the Infidel Reichs, 
Uh, he's, he's working on some new videos for us too. So there's some new ones coming up. That's cool. Yeah. I like that. I, I'm all about that. Cause to me, when somebody does a video, it tells me that they're, I mean, they're truly into the craft. It's not just record some shit in a basement and that's it. And so I, I, I enjoy that. I know some people would say they're not into that. They think that's pussy shit. I've heard see people, but then again, I say fuck them because they're not the ones out there making music, you know? Exactly. Everybody's going to have their fucking opinion. And oh, yeah. It doesn't matter. Where, do what you want to do. Absolutely. Fucking make me laugh. Um, Real quick. So uh, I know you're, you're doing the Ashron uh, history video, so I don't want to take a bunch of details from that because I want to see your version of it. But I just got a quick question. I know when uh, Rides the Black Mass first came out, it was on Turbo. And for me, when I bought the cassette, I obviously here in America, I bought JL America version. How was that working with that label and uh, just any interesting stories or whatnot? That was probably one of the most, the biggest nightmares <laughs> I've ever <laughs> dealt with. Uh, that label <laughs> ripped off every band on it. They lied. You know, back then we used to, I used to have to communicate through fax because they were from Germany. Yeah. And they told us about fake tours. They told us about, I mean, they just pumped up themselves like they were going to give us the world. And uh, they put out albums. We literally didn't get a copy of our own album. I had to go to the local record store and buy my own copy of that album when that came out. That's fucked. Yeah. And then Jail America put out some stuff. And they did, if you compare it to the Turbo version, it's it's very amateurish. I mean, they at least got it out to the stores and a lot of the mail order and a lot of people did pick it up, but they didn't really do a good job with the layouts and stuff like that. They kind of generic it. And uh, later they ripped us off too. You never heard from them again. So, you know, that was a great beginning to know exactly what the industry was about. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of interesting. Cause I remember back then when uh, jail America came out, they seemed to be like they were trying to really push themselves as a serious label because they were at ads in all the magazines and whatnot. And, I, and that's how I heard about them. Honestly, I didn't like Asheron. I didn't have the demo. I was doing tape trading, but I didn't have your demo before that. But then I bought it, bought it when uh, JL America came out and it's fucking great. But you're right about the layouts. You could tell that it was kind of cheap looking compared to some of the yeah. other labels, but still they released some great stuff. I mean, did your, your album, uh, the Herit and some other stuff. I got a, bought a ton. I actually just about everything they released. I bought it back then. Cause it was some pretty cool bands on there, but yeah, the packaging was kind of shitty, but you know, yeah, it's, it, it is it's what it is. I mean, it, it did help catapult us, you know, and got the name out there, got people to be able to pick up the album and stuff like that. But Turbo actually, they they went out of business and they came back two different times under different names, releasing those same albums and making money off of them and then going back under again. And it was like a big scam. And yeah, well, one thing people have to know, understand, read those contracts before you sign them. I mean, they're a major thing. Yeah, I know. That's why with our shit so far, we've just been releasing it ourselves because it's worked pretty well so far. I mean, eventually probably work with the label, but right now we have everything under control of ourselves and no fucking weird shit going on. <laughs> right. So, but anyway, yeah. Uh, it's about you. So, uh, but yeah, I, I for me, it, it was great. And, and I, I know you probably watched the video I did about Ashron about when I first listened to him in, this was 92. So I was uh, a senior in high school, bought that. And there was other guy that was, I mentioned the video that was obsessed I mean, I like Dasheron, but this other guy was obsessed. And I told you, he made a, a wood shop cutout <laughs> and in class. It said Asheron right. and had it on his door. And this guy, crazy. But uh, it's not funny, but it is funny because I think he listened to too much Asheron because he ended up fucking blowing his brains out. <laughs> later. Yeah, <damn. laughs> Could I be an yeah I, I don't think your lyrics made him do it, though. <laughs> right. right. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, one other thing about uh, music. I know I, I touched upon this in the video. Uh, Those who have risen that album. That mm -hmm. I like uh, all of Ashron's albums. The the first one's probably one of my favorites. But that Those Who Have Risen is 
that is a fantastic album. Like I mentioned, the opening track, the Life Force. Mm -hmm. I love that song so much because the keyboards in that, for me, are done in a way that are, it, to me, it brings a different emotion to me versus if I listen to any other, other black metal bands or whoever has used keyboards before because it has a very, like I mentioned in the video, a very uh, uh, tangerine dream feel to it. Like, have uh, you uh, seen the movie Near Dark? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so that the the score of that totally reminded me of the keyboards in that song, and man, it, it it's probably one of my favorite death metal songs of all time for sure. Oh, that's cool. I appreciate you. Well, you know, it's funny because uh, fans, that's like a hit or miss. Either they completely love it or they totally hate it. Yeah, and, and I under, I can understand because you know it's it's definitely strays from the path you know we have done, but. The whole idea was that for that album specifically, it was supposed to be more atmospheric. That's why the keyboards were a little bit more dominant than the guitar, yeah. because it wanted to capture that weird feel of, you know, astral projecting and, and ritual and stuff like that. And uh, the mood was very important. So, I, you know, I could see people listen to Rights of the Black Mass that was just completely raw and listen to that going, what the fuck are they doing? But yeah. Um, that was just something I had to do and I'm glad I did it. And I definitely appreciate the ones that like got it like you. Yeah. I'm glad you did. Cause you're right. Uh, it, it's, it's not, that album is not going to make me want to get up and start busting shit up or nothing like that. Like some of your other stuff does. But for me, it's just a good listen, just to listen to and enjoy it and put me in a certain mood, not angry or nothing. It's just, but again, it, it, it brings those feelings to me. Like when I listen to Tangerine Dream scores, which I fucking love that, uh, <clears throat> that band, not saying mm -hmm. you sound like Tangerine Dream, but it has that same kind of emotion to it. And Fine, I still remember yeah. the first time I heard that song, it immediately, I just, holy fuck, this is good. Yeah. But I don't I know if you drop that in there. Cause I, I fucking love that song, the whole album too, but it just, that song in particular. Fantastic. Right. Shit. So, uh, uh, moving on, I know, uh, after rise of the black mass came out and I know you were doing some, uh, uh, debates with, uh, Bob Larson and some other evangelistic, uh, people. How was that? I mean, I, I know this is something that's been covered over and over, but there may be some people watching this that may not know about it. Cause there's some new fucks that are watching this shit. Yeah. That the Bob Larson encounters, it, it actually started off. Um, I was at a friend's house. And, you know, we were all friends with, you know, Glenn Benton and, you know, Trey and start off with some phone calls that they did. And it was like, you'd literally listen to Bob Larson on the radio while you're partying and just, just to laugh, you know, and someone sent him our album and he started talking shit about us. <laughs> so we kind of went back and forth and he challenged me to, you know, do a video with them. So our old guitarist, Vincent Brady and myself, we flew to Denver to do a video with him. <clears throat> and right off the bat, this guy, he literally has a staff of probably six to seven people in the other room on computers to feed him Bible verses and debate answers at like, any given moment it's a complete scam uh i really don't like that video just because i was so pissed off when we got there i was just being a smart ass and i just i wasn't conveying what i wanted to because he brought actually a group of christian teenagers to watch which wasn't agreed upon mm. he brought in this book that had like a stick with fake blood and said oh does one of your friends do this and it was just like Jerry Springer, Christian version. So we, we did the interview. It was entertaining. But, you know, if, if people think we were trying to convey, like, some serious shit in there, it was more like wrestling. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was just uh, entertainment. Well, I um, think – I'm sorry, go on. And actually, <clears throat> I – it was a couple of years after, actually, it was several years after that. We, I did a, a debate with him in Fort Worth, Texas, in your part of the woods. Mm -hmm. And uh, he brought me to this church, and it was like probably about 2,000 people. We did this debate, and it was like 
the most entertaining time. I wish that it was filmed, but he never released it because it was just <laughs> too, it was hilarious. But uh, yeah, that guy is just a con man. He, he had an interview with me before the show. I used to have these boots that I used to have a crucifix glued to the bottom. And I was talking to him and I had my leg up on my, uh, my leg. And I, he goes, what's that on your boot? I go, it's a crucifix. He goes, why do you have it on your foot? I said, so I can step on Christ every time I take a step. And he smiled from ear to ear. And I go, man, you're such a con man. You just love this shit. <laughs> yeah, that, it's exactly what it was. Just fucking pure entertainment. But hey, I, I, I'd like to see that one from Fort Worth. I, I didn't know about that. But the other one, I feel that that's what you just do. I would have been pissed off too. Just start t talking crazy shit because you're dealing with some weird ass idiots like that. <clears throat> that's what you expect. Yeah. And actually, the Christian. Go on. I'm sorry. The Christian right. The Christian right did a lot of entertaining things, you know, during that time. Um, it, it's, it made a spectacle of Satanism and it probably promoted it more than it did anything else, especially metal music. It made it so popular just to be against it. Yeah, it, it definitely had an adverse effect because it made people want to know more about it. That so-called quote unquote satanic panic and actually Hold that topic. I want to just go back real quick to something. This is totally fucking off the wall. You mentioned Glenn Benton. It's funny on the video I posted of uh, Ashron. Somebody commented. I can't remember who it was. They asked, hey, who do you think would win in a pro in their primes a fist fight between Vincent Crowley and Glenn Benton? <laughs> Somebody asked that shit on there. So my response was, I would probably go with Vincent Crowley. He's got the height and reach. So I can imagine a <laughs> stiff jab followed by a big cross and split his forehead open. <laughs> but... People ask some weird shit like that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm friends with Glenn, so that would never happen. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I was laughing. I love Deicide too. So, I mean, I don't know him, but I, I am a big fan of Deicide. Right. I think, but, you uh, know, someone made a comment about that. Um, one of my said something about <laughs> me asking me about being an ECW. And I was like, I don't know where that came from <laughs> at all. And I told them the only thing link I have to ECW is I was friends with the Sinister Minister mm -hmm. that was in ECW at the time. We were pretty yeah. good friends while I lived in Florida, and that's the only thing. I don't know how that rumor started popping up. That was kind of a weird thing. <laughs> well, it's funny how stuff happens because actually, in that comment that that person made, they didn't ask about you know about his ECW roots, and they said that too. And I, I, my mind was like, what? I, I didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway but uh that's cool actually you said we're kind of jump around on topics i do want to get back to that satanic panic this is kind of off the wall um mm -hmm. well, not off the wall but you mentioned you work out because i gotta say you definitely you, you you keep up uh you have a youthful appearance i'm assuming you do train and work out what are you about 54 now or something i'm 55 55 so you see yeah. that's a good thing uh, i'm 49 i'm right behind you but not up there but staying active and uh working out it definitely makes a big difference versus someone looking youthful versus some old ragged piece of shit because uh i know people i know my age look like fucking dog shit i'm sure you do as well so what, what do you do yeah, to stay active you know i i <clears throat> i work out like at least five times a week you know i i i do lighter weights now because you know it's it's i've had injuries throughout the years of lifting so I'm not trying to get big anymore. I'm just, you know, trying to stay healthy. Um, plus, I do physical work in my job. So, you know, that kind of keeps it, too. I've also, the last 10 years, you know, I pretty much don't drink anymore or do any, you know, I try to keep kind of healthy as much as I can because it's almost like when you're you're doing music, when you're getting older, you 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 got to step up against these young kids, you know, man, yeah. if no one wants to see some old man, you know, gimping out and, you know, looking like shit, you know, <laughs> you know I want to make sure, you know, and, you know, just like wrestling or, or, or any UC, UFC or stuff. If someone's going to be past their prime, you, you definitely have to fucking take care of yourself more and, you know, put more into yourself to, give those people what they want to see. 
Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. <clears throat> well, you do have a, a youthful look because that's uh, a lot of people just take that for granted. And before you know it, they are barely 50 years old and look like a piece of dog shit or they're about half dead and can't even sit on the floor and get back up. So I uh, commend you. And like I said, I try to do the same thing. I've been an athlete since I was since 1986 and never stopped. <clears throat> and even today, I still work out because I don't want to be that old piece of shit that can't even fucking move or nothing like that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. No, I agree. It's, it's like, you know, you, you see these people like say shit with age. It's like, you know, I see 30 year olds that look like they're fucking 100, you know, it's yeah. just like it's, yeah. it's crazy. So. Yeah, I agree 100 percent. They say uh, everybody tells me, oh, I'm getting old like motherfucker. You're getting old. I'm not. I don't feel that way. Yeah. I, I I like to because if I don't work out, if I don't eat a certain way, I feel like fucking shit. Like I feel lazy and lethargic, and I, I don't want that. Mm -mm, not at all. Absolutely. Anyway, that's good. Yeah, it's uh, I like to talk to other people that train because I know I I talk do videos at J Dog too, and we talk about uh, working out and athletics and stuff like that. So it's that's cool, and uh, mm -hmm. it shows on you. So give yourself a pat on the back. <laughs> For sure. But yeah, anyway, so go back to uh, the satanic panic. It's kind of uh, interesting about how in the 80s it was a Christian right about doing that. That was the cancel culture, so to speak. And now the paradigm has shifted where now it's more of a left wing thing where they're looking for every little thing to uh, cancel. It's kind of interesting of how the new rebellion is almost like uh, being more, I don't want to say right wing, not right wing, but more against this uh, can cancel culture woke shit or whatever they, they want to call it yeah it it's weird because everybody jumped on board because they thought it was the thing to do it was the right thing to do and then people took advantage of that and start manipulating stuff um if you didn't agree with a certain idea or format that was for a certain position on that side bump you're a nazi yeah. Up, you're a racist. That was the catchphrase. You know, back in the 80s, up, oh, they're a devil worshiper. Up, oh, they're a Satanist. Yeah. It's the same bullshit, just in a different package. And uh it it's 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 just ridiculous. I mean, I, I, I get sick of having people go, I you know, they try to say something, they go, whoops, I can't say that. Say what the fuck you want, you know. It's like don't worry about offending or whatever. If it's gonna come out your mouth, it's gonna come out your fucking mouth, you know? Yeah. Um, or have to like support groups that have nothing to do with you. It, it's like, you know, I'm all for everybody can be what they want, <laughs> do what they want, live like they want, worship what they want. I don't care, but it doesn't mean I gotta fucking pat you on the back for doing it, you know? And yeah. this woke society, give everybody a trophy. Everybody's equal. No, they're not fucking equal. There's a bunch, there's people that excel, and there's people that are scumbags and fucking accept that. It doesn't matter your color, your religion, or whatever. Yeah. There are shit in every fucking tribe out there. Yeah. So we need to get balls back again and, and quit being a bunch of fucking pussies and, and and understand that you know it's okay to be yourself, it's okay to have a thought, you know, and even if people that do stuff that you might not agree with. You don't have to agree with them. You don't have to promote them. You don't have to even be friends with them. Yeah. But they have the right to do that. And you were in the military, right? Yes. yes. So you 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 actually <laughs> fought for freedom of speech. You know what I mean? And these people are basically saying, "Fuck you. You got to shut your fucking mouth." And yeah. and and that's wrong. And it's like everybody from the dumbest shit to the coolest shit have a right to, you know, express themselves. I know it, it's, it's, it's just crazy because uh, anytime someone sees something they don't agree with, they got to freak out about it. I see shit that I don't agree with every day that makes me sick, but I'm not going to approach them unless they come and disrespect me. But if, if, otherwise, if somebody does something that makes me sick, it's not my fucking problem. Or I feel like I don't need to get on a web page and talk shit. And I think a lot of this too, in the old days, it was about honor and you have a problem, you go fucking take it up to their face and to handle it. Now people are fucking pussies with no repercussions. They talk shit online and whatever. Yep. 
it just seems so just an absurd society. And even like you mentioned, everybody getting a trophy. No, fuck no. If you, you work hard, you get a trophy, you lay on your fucking ass and play video games, you don't get shit. And that's just how yes. it should be. You know, yeah. but mediocrity is being acceptable. Being a fucking fat ass laying on your couch all day is acceptable. Well, my feelings are hurt and I can't get out of the house. I need my safe space. That's fucking <laughs> pussy shit right there. Fucking makes me sick. Okay. And I mean, you think about that's a lot of people, this upcoming generation. Yeah. I mean, those are the people that are going to be defending this country. Yeah. That's, that's pretty fucking scary. You know, um, I, I saw, actually saw some video the other day. Some guy was saying that they better not draft me because I'm not the kind to, you know, hold a gun and da da da. But this guy's like crying about his freedoms and all that stuff. And he said, let the people that are Second Amendment lovers do it and stuff. Guess what, buddy? You want that? You want that freedom? You want those rights? You got to fight for it, too. So, yeah, you're, uh, it, it's, you're uh, it's, it's just fucking hilarious, man. It, it, I don't know. Th th now, this topic, we could have a whole fucking two hour conversation about just absurd shit like this. And and, and I think. Now, as far as in the metal scene, I think you're starting to see people really pushing back, especially in the fucking black metal scene. I think people are tired of that fucking crap. I know in death metal and punk and stuff, they're still got this some bullshit they still follow. But I think black metal is definitely uh, pushing back. I, I see a lot against that kind of crap. Mm. Well, but, uh, I the problem is it's like, they they start labeling bands like this NSBM. Yeah. And and it's like I've seen people labeled as that. I like look at these lists and go, who the fuck are they getting this idea from? I mean, yeah. 99% of those bands have nothing to do with that. And there are, you know, it always killed me is bands that are actual Nazis or racists and stuff, they're pretty forward about their beliefs and they are yeah. pretty forward about what they're into they don't hide behind something just to sneak in some little thing they are straightforward type people so to think that all these bands are hidden you know secretive nazis it's fucking stupid and and um you know barely like marduk it's that band actually i believe they even toured in israel they get called nazis all the time it's like it's ridiculous. Yeah, it is because yeah, it, it is fucking stupid. I mean, you're right. Everybody, oh, this person is NSBM. It, it's fucking stupid. I mean, I, and, and like even too, if they see that you're listening to it, like for me, I listen to left wing bands. I listen to some racist bands. I don't give a fuck if it's good music. It's good music. I mean, but then somebody says, oh, you're you're listening to Screwdriver, or you're listening to. Uh, uh, I don't know, Grandpa Lyle's key, whatever, whoever the fuck, uh, absurd. Now you're a fucking Nazi. Or it's fucking stupid because I'll listen to that shit and I'll listen to left wing shit like a Gothic Lees or whoever, Napalm Death. It, it's, it's all the same yeah. to me. I like good music, but people like to uh, really look at music and look at the lyrics and try to find something in there. Hey, they, they said this, and I think read between the lines, it means they're saying Heil Hitler, and it's not even there. It's it's, yeah. it's pretty fucking comical to me. It's just yeah. crazy. Well, I mean, and it's funny because you know, it's always these underground bands they go after. Um, go listen to some of this hip hop. <laughs> they got the most racist shit in there, and yeah. no one says anything about that. Yeah. And does it offend me? I could give two shits. I mean, you know what I mean? It's like that's their freedom if they feel that way or they want to express. Let them. I don't have to listen to them. It's like yeah. it's it's real simple, and it, it it's just like anything else. Um, if you don't let people express themselves, you're basically becoming a fascist kind of place. Like I had a question on one of my last uh, in videos. They asked me did, what I thought about communism and yeah, uh, I remember national socialism, and it's like. Neither one has anything to do with me because I think they're both controlling things. And yeah. so when you think about it, a lot of these people that hate the Nazis, they're commies and they're the same shit. They just yeah. act like they're united. So 
you know, the whole satanic idea is, you know, yourself, your own people as uh where watch when I say people, because I'll say that's racist for saying, you know, <laughs> you know, people within your your uh right, friends and such and family, those are the things that matter. And and you just don't like embrace everybody because come on, fucking most people hate other people. It's like mankind is the most fucking hate hateful creature in the world. That is a very good point because I truly feel humans in in general are inherently evil. They really are. I mean, you think about this, anybody, they like to see sensationalism, like to see negativity or the average person, if you tell them, hey, you know, so-and-so, they just caught AIDS and the, or whatever. They're dying. Somebody kind of, in a way, kind of gets excited about, oh, really? And they act like they're sad, but they kind of get excited about it too, which seems fucked up, but that's how... I mean, it's just how people think. I mean, it's how many how many times have you seen a car accident? How many cars rubbernecked to see that shit? Exactly. They are enthralled in seeing the death of someone else or something getting hurt or we're morbid creatures. That's just the way it is. You know, yeah. uh, you could put a blanket on yourself, but you're still the same shit underneath. It's yeah. it's uh, that's why I always said it's like people are going to have a problem with other people. Just do your own fucking thing. That's why I really don't, I don't socialize hardly at all. Um, I pretty much work, do my music. You know, I either hang out with my wife and our animals and, and that's it. You know, I have friends over once in a great while that, you know, I'm close to, but I'm not that guy going out all the time and, and trying to go to the latest party or whatever stuff. It's like, I truly dislike most human beings yeah. because most are a bunch of backstabbing scum and that's just the way it is. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it is, it truly is because in the past I used to have huge group of friends and whatnot, but these days I limit it down to about 10 or so because there's people that I've known for 20, 30 years and just keep it like that because bringing in new people, people get either their, ego gets hurt they're jealous or they're they're insecure and uh, fuck all that crap man but it, it's that's the that's how humans are that's how it is anyway Absolutely. fuck all this pussy shit um <laughs> let's talk about something cool because to me that's it's an interesting topic but it makes me sick at the same time um something cool so we talked about the satanic panic and everything and uh the thing about how metal and also horror kind of goes hand in hand. I know you've talked about uh, horror movies and whatnot. Actually, before we go into this, I know you had talked about, uh, somebody asked you a question about Terrifier, those movies. Mm -hmm. I know you even had the shirt on. It's kind of funny about that because those movies, I saw the uh, first anthology, what was it, All Hallows' Eve, where the clown yeah. was on there. I saw that one first and I, I thought it was okay, but it didn't really feel like I needed to rewatch it or anything. But then People kept commenting, telling, "Hey, you need, you really need to watch uh, Terrifier one and two. So recently, I went on ahead and watched both of them, and uh, I was very happy with what I saw. It had everything I wanted for that type of movie. Yeah, it was like the, the All Hallows Eve was kind of like you know just kind of introducing, I think, the character. But when Terrifier, that first one came, I was like, "Wow, this is what I kind of missed." Because I thought that the Hatchet movies were entertaining, but some of the some of the effects were pretty cheesy. You know, the gore was kind of cheesy, but I still <laughs> liked it because it was yeah. ridiculous. But the actual Terrifier stuff, there are some really good practical effects. And, and you know, both those movies just so gruesome. It was beautiful. It was like, you know, stuff you wouldn't expect to see in any movie right now. Yeah. And, and actually, too, you know, I'm sure you can attest to this as well. After watching horror movies for so many years, you're kind of desensitized to it. Um, when I watched that, I mean, I wasn't grossed out, but there was points where I was like, yeah, that makes me feel uncomfortable. Like, that looks painful as fuck. Like, pe the, the characters are getting really fucked up in these movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was like really, like you said, we're kind of immune to that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I think the last movie that actually even got me to go, what the fuck is that? The Serbian film, that fucking movie was 
just the whole topic was fucked up. And I, I thought, <laughs> would you ever seen a Serbian film? It's just called a Serbian film. Yeah. Oh, oh, I, if, you, oh if you haven't seen that, you got to watch it. That that's one that's definitely has some topics that. Well, it's twisted as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just called a Serbian film. Yeah. Okay. I will remember that. I'll check yeah, it, it out. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, definitely I, a must watch because it, it's it just deals with some stuff that should get a like person that has even like us like oh, that's kind of fucked up. It's really <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> well, then yeah, I need to watch that. Then <laughs> I need to check that out. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I, I think the. Uh, like I said, I, I really feel that the uh, Terrifier films really brought back that kind of old school slasher feel. And I, I enjoyed them. They really did. And I get your point as far as Hatchet. The first Hatchet was good. And then as the sequels kept happening, it's like they were trying to get more and more absurd, which is, is fine. But it, it didn't have that uncomfortable feeling. It was more comical than anything. Right, right. That's one thing about the Terrifier stuff, too. Art the Clown is still say, staying twisted. He doesn't have room to talk to say some catchphrases and make them kind of funny, like yeah. you know some of our past horror characters. Yeah. And uh, uh, I just think if they keep going that route, it could be a really good franchise. <clears throat> I agree. I know they were having that third one, which I'm looking forward to because I really enjoy the second one, and they keep in that same route. I mean. It, <laughs> That part in the second one where skin that bitch and start pouring uh, salt and uh, what was it? Some other shit on her. <laughs> it was. Oh, yeah. That was pretty good. Uh, it was. Uh, I liked it. But yeah, going back to uh, the 80s, it's just kind of funny how in the early 80s, how metal and horror started kind of clashing a little bit. You see, like uh, I did a video a while back about some movies. Remember Alone in the Dark, 1981? It had uh, 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 Jack Palance and Walter Matthau. No, no, I mean, uh, not Walter Matthau. Martin Landau, <laughs> not Walter Matthau. <laughs> Martin Landau and Donald Pleasance. But that movie had the uh, scene where they go and see that band, the De- uh, Sick Fox, and there's like music playing in there. You start to see oh, more yeah. more stuff like that. And then yeah. uh, remember, even though it's not a horror movie, but Dungeon Master, it had With wasps. wasps on there. Yeah. And that, that was really cool because I was a kid back then and I, I knew of Wasp, but that was the first time I actually seen them kind of in action playing, so to speak. So it was pretty cool. I, I think metal and horror just go hand in hand for the most part. And, yeah. you know, when I started my new band, Vincent Crowley, that was one direction that I've always wanted to write about. Um, not just like a, a lyrics that are talking about one thing, but I wanted to. T- tell almost like watching a movie. Like if you listen to the song, it's almost like watching a movie or a short and it brings you into that element and gives you the feel of the story. Um, I really enjoyed Star News. Our new album, we even went a little bit further with the storytelling and all these the horror stuff. The first album was more based on death stories and this one goes a little bit more on horror. And uh, yeah, I just love doing that. And that's just like something i'm really passionate about doing right now so i really think metal and horror go fucking hand in hand for sure well yeah i definitely agree that uh vincent crowley beyond asheron album definitely has that feel to it again that's another one of those albums where i don't necessarily want to get up and start a circle pit to it but it, it does right. create a certain sense of feeling there's some really cool riffs cool leads on there and it's uh i think it's a really damn good album Really good, good old piece. I look forward to more stuff in that vein for sure. Um, but yeah, um, 80s stuff. Remember the uh, this is early on too. Remember the Devil's Reign, Ernest Borg. Oh, yeah, yep. William, was it William Shatner was in that too? I yes, think. and Tom Skerritt. Yep, it's, Anton LaVey. Yeah, he did. He had that fucking yep. helmet on. Helmet. Yep. Yes, it's funny that movie. I saw that as a kid. And so it came out, I think, 
81. I don't, it was either late seventies or early eighties. I can't remember, but I saw the movie probably in 1982 when it was on regular TV. And I remember staying up and watching it. And then when Ernest Borg and I turned into the devil, I thought that was so cool, but I was scared at the same time. <laughs> right. Right. I always found it was funny. Oh, when I was in the church of Satan, you know, you, you hear different facts and information and uh, I always thought it was funny that I guess LeVay was really good friends with Eddie Albert. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. 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 They were like really good friends. Actually, that's interesting, too, because that album, I mean, not that album, that movie was kind of a low budget movie, but it had a pretty damn good cast on there. I mean, Ernest yeah. Borgnine, Eddie Albert, they were already established stars. I know Tom Skerritt was still starting up back then and John Travolta, his little cameo on yeah. there. and like three seconds. <laughs> yeah, I know. They barely show him. But yeah, I watched that. This the, the When their eyes were blacked out, man, that shit freaked me out as a kid. I was pretty scared of that. I look at it now and think that's not even fucking scary at all. But it was it's a right. cool movie. I watch it pretty often still. Yeah, it's great. It's funny that back then, too, that, you know, actually after The Exorcist came out, all these satanic movies started coming out. You remember the uh, Manitou? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> With I, actually Tony Curtis. That on, I actually watched that on like creature feature on a Saturday when it came out, you know, yeah. it was like the big shit, the Indian spear coming out the back and stuff. Yeah. yeah that was a great movie. It is man. That little fucking midget Indian creature on there. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh wait, I better say native American. Sorry. <laughs> and little person. <laughs> yeah. That little person, the little midget Indian, <laughs> but man, that, that was a, a great dish, absurd movie. And another one, as a kid, I saw it back then, and I was fucking scared as shit of it. And now I look at it, and it's just very comical as fuck. Yeah, yeah. You know, last night we actually watched uh, Trick or Treat. You remember that one with uh, Sammy Kerr? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. That, that's We we were having a discussion with me and my wife. It's like, they always made metalheads like these nerdy guys that, you know, were getting picked on and shit. It's like. I don't recall any metalheads that really got picked on in high school and shit. Usually, it, it was know, just kind of weird. That is a good point, you know, because they, they usually say, oh, people get into metal because they needed a belonging and they, you know, were outcasts. Uh, same thing. In high school, nobody fucking picked on us. Shit. We fucking whipped <laughs> people's asses. I mean, it was, it, it's... It wasn't like a bunch of fucking nerds getting into it. That's something I never oh. understood because there are people like that. But for me, I, I don't can't relate to that at all. Yeah, I mean, that is it it always funny. I thought that Hollywood had this perception of metalheads just being a bunch of dorks and geeks that, you know, and like you said, there are some out there, you know, whatever. But it's like uh, I never had the experience of like knowing anybody that got pushed around or, you know, like you said, Someone did shit. We were whooping some fucking ass. That's yeah. just the way it fucking was. The way it should be, man. But yeah, it's funny on fucking trick or treat, fucking Ragman. <laughs> that kid yeah. did right. Yeah. When I first got that came out in 87. So I, I didn't see it at the movies. I remember the uh, trailers when it was coming out, but then when it was new release on VHS, we rented it. And it's funny, my dad actually rented it, came home. I said, Oh, you rented this shit. And I thought it was cool at the beginning. They showed his all the posters on his walls, and he had some showing Megadeth records and Anthrax and yeah. shit. So it was pretty cool back then, and, and even the uh, Fastway soundtrack I thought was pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah it's funny though. It's just like I didn't think the the music fit the the band. Like I yeah. thought, if it's supposed to be this dark, evil band, you know, Fastway is definitely not the band that, no. that would convey that. <laughs> Yeah, but, they, they they could have used a definitely a darker sounding soundtrack. But I guess now I just kind of see it hand in hand as a soundtrack. But yeah, it, it could have been something a lot darker with the satanic elements and everything. But you you know, it's talking about the satanic panic. You could tell that was totally influenced by that because the the visual of Sammy Kerr was a lot of the metal people like Motley Crue and stuff yeah. with the, the certain spikes and stuff. Him talking to the was he talking to the Senate or something? That was like the D Snyder with the yeah. censorship. Yes. And it's almost like some executive goes, Hey, let's do a movie on metal. We got all this information. And they, they got some of this stuff. Okay. But it was just so out there. I, I always thought, and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, 
But that would be a good movie to remake, but make it a dark fucking movie. Yeah. And the kid and the ragman character does what he wants to do at the end. He doesn't like back out. He gets rid of all those people and it and enjoys it. Make it a real dark, you know, movie like that. If I was a director, I'd do that. <laughs> Actually, I agree. Normally I'm not so much into remakes, but I have done right. I mean, take it from a fucking death or black metal approach to it and make mm -hmm. this kid like he's a fucking dangerous as fuck kind of guy. I yeah, I, that could definitely be a damn good movie if, if done right. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Man, yeah, that'd be a good idea. But you're right. It definitely was uh uh they were playing off the current situation back then. He even had Ozzy Osbourne as a fucking uh preacher. Yeah, it was fucking yeah. hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, good shit. That's, but uh, it's it's still a classic movie. I I love it. I mean, I actually found a shirt and a and a hoodie of that, and I was like, I never thought I'd find one of those online. But I was like, it's kind of cool to kind of visit your past. Yeah, it's it's a cool movie. It's one of those ones too. I watch probably once a year. Something. It's just a cool memory. And it's funny. The uh, guy that played as Sammy Kerr was a damn solid gold dancer off that show. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, that's, that's why he was doing all spinning dances and yeah. shit. And actually, the motherfucker's dead now. He died from AIDS, actually. Oh, wow. It's, yeah. my, my wife said last night, he goes, he kind of moves around like that saxophone player in Lost Boys. Lost I, Boys. Go, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it kind of does in parts. It's funny. Yeah, it's very theatrical. That's for damn sure. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, that was good times, man. It was uh really good. What the fuck else? Oh, uh, I'm trying to think of two. Remember, I'm sure you've seen demons too. Oh, absolutely. That's man, great heavy metal. Movie. Oh, great, great movie. Good soundtrack. Saxon, except Motley Crew. Yeah. And actually, talking about Motley Crew, back. It's funny how for me how I even got into heavier stuff because. When uh, Shout at the Devil came out in 83, I was still younger, and, and uh, my dad actually bought that record. My fucking mom was pissed as fuck, and he would play that and let, let us listen to it. And I was both scared of it but liked it, too, and that's kind of what got me into all the fucking death metal and shit afterwards. But that Motley Crue Shout at the Devil, I still, yeah. I still like that album a lot. Yeah, I mean, I think that's... Uh... That's the best thing they ever put out. That's for sure. Oh, uh, yeah. But I actually think I was like a freshman in high school when a friend of mine came. Uh, he had moved from LA to Michigan where I was living at the time. And he took pictures, I guess, of Motley Crue when they were opening for Kiss before they got signed. Oh. But they, but yeah, these pro shots of them with the pentagrams and the candelabras and shit. Yeah. That, and that's how I got, I got introduced to it. And so I, I really looked and like, you know, finally found the albums. I was like, wow, this is pretty good. And, you know, obviously I liked heavier stuff too, but I, I definitely thought those were solid albums, you know, and especially Shot the Devil. That was just a good heavy metal album. Yeah, it is. And I like the production. It's very uh, dark sounding. And then the way that it even starts off that intro in the beginning, then it mm -hmm. goes into Shot the Devil. I thought it's such a great uh, intro. And then, after that, the next album, I can't remember if it was Theater of Pain or I think Theater of Pain was next. And it was just like crap compared to yeah. Shout at the Devil. They're trying to go more commercial and glam. Fucking crazy shit. But yeah, Demons, though, very good stuff. Very good. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, so uh, what else? Anything else? That, when's the uh, you said so there's a new Vincent Crowley you're working on that's about to be released or? Yeah, actually, actually, the album's been done for quite a while now. We had, we were in the studio finishing mixing, and it kind of got didn't make the deadline to get out this year. So it will be released February twenty third of next year. Okay. Um, so, um, it's going to be on uh, Hammer Heart Records. Okay, cool. And yeah, it's 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 definitely a. a it's called be called anthology of horror. And obviously it's a compilation of horror stories and some stories, you know, some stories I kind of made up. We have stuff on it. Uh, the, actually the cover is kind of based on all the ideas of the, the stories of, 
of the album, but the main focus on the cover is the Amityville house, which that movie was a major influence on me growing up. And yeah. it's like, it was very cool to manifest that on an album and kind of get that influence out. And uh, we have songs on, you know, there's a vampires and werewolves and uh, Cthulhu and voodoo. And it, there's it's just an array thing. It's almost like when you watch creep show, every, yeah. every story is a little bit different and stuff. Yeah, I think uh, you had mentioned in one of your videos that you're using this, the same artist that did the other cover is doing the artwork for this one as well. Yeah, Timo Wars, and he's from Germany. Uh, he did all the Ash Run albums back in the 2000s that we put out. And he had actually, uh, interesting note is I, I he, he saw my last video. And he goes, did you know I did one of the Terrifier, uh, it was it All Hallows Eve Blu-ray art Oh, for that movie? So he, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool he did that. So, yeah, he'll be yeah. doing the art on this. That is pretty impressive. So I guess he's uh, pretty prolific with uh, what he's doing. Yeah. Very cool and, you know, stuff. One thing with, with, the one thing with the Vincent Crowley band, you know, some people, I think, expect Asheron. It's not Asheron. It's, 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 it might have some similarities and some rhythms because I write some of the music, obviously. But, you know, I think it's more almost like old school metal like if you took king diamond and candle mass and you know stuff like that and you put aggressive like heavier music or vocals on top of it that's more in the vein of what we're doing now yeah i could definitely agree with that i could definitely agree with that because that's how i feel it feels like just like a a classic heavy metal album but still like death metal it's got the good vocals to it so again, I, 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 it doesn't make me want to get up and start tearing the house up. It, it puts me in a good, I, I just love the feeling it puts me in. It's, I think I might have even mentioned this in the video, but I, that Vincent Crowley album, I like to listen to that in my car if I want to, like, I went the other day, I, I drove somewhere and I listened to the whole album from beginning to end. And mm -hmm. that's the way to listen to that album. You ask me, it's not just like singles. It's more of listen to the whole thing together. It kind of works cohesive for me. Because I'm, yeah, I'm not I mean, going to get get a song off that and put it on a playlist. If I'm going to listen to it, I'm going to listen to the whole thing. Right. And that's that's cool you said that because, you know, it, it was meant to be like that. It was meant to, you know, goes from the intro, which is kind of presenting the heartbeat. And then at the end of the album, it's dying off. You know, it's 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 meant to be a journey, you know, to kind of go through. You know, not all people are going to like that type of stuff, but that's where my head's at now. It's almost like we talked about, you know, making it like a movie or, or a, a short story film. Um, I, I, I want the listener not to get up and go crazy. You know, I just yeah. want to get in a dark space and kind of feel the, the story being told and, and kind of get in there. So it's, it's definitely a different type of vibe for, you know, people to check out. I think it works because I, because I love horror movies and whatnot. And also, too, one other thing what I always liked about Asheron, I know I mentioned this before about how a lot of stuff is more mid-tempo. There are faster stuff, but another thing, too, I felt that stands out for Asheron is the vocals. Because for me, when I hear your vocals, I can immediately identify with them. And they're deep and raspy, but they're still, I can understand them. You know, a lot of bands just, just don't even do the syllables and make the sounds, which I like that, too, but... In Asheron, right. it was always very distinct as far as the uh, pronunciation of the words and whatnot, which I thought was cool. Yeah, I, I definitely hearing the you know you write lyrics, you want to make sure people understand them. And, yeah, but you, and I tried I tried to do it, and you'll tell on albums I, I experimented with vocals just to kind of keep the heaviness or make sure the the vocals were pronounced well. Um, the new Vincent Crowley stuff, I, you know, as you can tell, I definitely experiment with my vocals. You know, I do the high ones in some songs. I do the deep ones mixed in. I do a lot of layering to give a, a certain feel. I might do a heavy voice with a spoken underneath to give it kind of like yeah. a haunting feel. And so it, I put a lot more work into what I'm doing now, but it's kind of cool. Like everything I've learned kind of from in the past, I kind of took into my arsenal and, and, and kind of apply it now so 
Well, yeah, that's definitely very a good explanation because it definitely feels like a very uh, a seasoned album. Like it's a very mature. I, I, that sounds kind of fucking stupid, but it, it sounds very mature. Like it's not some fucking eighteen year old kids. It's somebody that's you know refine their craft and you're not worried about trying to just be so full of testosterone and fucking blasting the whole time. It's just more about right. the, the emotion, the experience. And that's what I want to hear in some albums. And for that, it, it checks off those things for me. It works. Right. And it's cool because it's like anything I do, I try to make, you know, sound different. You know, I don't want to do the same band three times or four times. And, you know, it's just the same kind of music. That's, and my aggression is infidel rank. You know, we get out all that testosterone on that. You yeah. know, we, we, we get the, the aggression and the rawness and stuff. And it's cool to do something different. And, and, and cause this, t- this point in my career, you know, I want to do, I, I, time's limited to all of us, but you know, when you're getting older, you want to make sure you utilize the time to do productive stuff. And I don't want to miss out on doing stuff I've wanted to do for years. So, you know, these bands I'm doing now are really important to me and in it's not for money. It's not for, it's for me. And yeah. <clears throat> it, it feels great to do it right now. Well, all your uh, releases definitely have their own, own uh, feeling to it. Cause when I listen to, uh, early Asheron album versus a sec- uh, later one, they don't sound the same. You can tell it's the same band, but they, they don't, they have their own uh, character. And also right. talking about Infidel Reich, it's kind of funny when that first EP came out, that is, I mentioned this in the video, this is one, that's one of the only times I think I've ever bought a digital album ever. Because I fucking <laughs> hate digital music, but I saw it and I, and I heard us. Oh man, I gotta buy this shit. It's fucking crazy. It's funny, and it's it's a pure mm-hmm. just fuck off to what what was going on, right? And of course, it was comical how people saw the cover and automatically thought, "Oh, this is a fucking Nazi band," which it wasn't. It was just fucking hilarious. So it was a, as they call but, that term, trolling people. That was a a big yeah. time right there. It was. That's why it's like it. It was an experiment, and and, and you know. Asheron did a show in Holland with uh, Asphyx and okay. Bob, who played drums for Asphyx, yeah. you know, we've been friends for years and we always talked about doing a project and that, that whole night we were talking just, man, what the fuck's wrong with the scene now? There are a bunch of fucking crybabies and everybody's worried about <laughs> stuff and shit. So we continued this conversation through emails and we're like, we need to do something to piss some people off because it's just people are just too content now. Bands are submitting and labels are submitting and the music media is submitting. Let's do something. It's almost like give them a book cover that's so offensive and then you open it up and it's totally not what you expect. And if you didn't read the book and you review it as a bad book, that's your fault for not fucking reading it. And yeah. <laughs> that is a, a great example because people just see the cover, some fucking pussy ass motherfucker. Oh, oh my God, this is scary. In yeah. reality, it, it's not even, you would think it's a bunch of third right NS shit, which it wasn't. It was, <laughs> the lyrics were great. I mean, it was just straight to the point and just a big, it, it almost had the uh, old punk rock ethos of, you know, fuck you. Because that, yep. for me, when I got into punk early on, I would listen to bands like Fear and stuff, but it was very much a fuck off kind of attitude, which it's not anymore. People are more about socially conscious bullshit now, but I feel like Infidel Reich had that fucking ethos and it it worked. The punk was definitely a big influence on this, especially lyrically, because it used to be back in the day, you questioned the status quo, you questioned the government, you questioned people that were authorities over you. You didn't just take be submissive like a bitch and fucking and yeah. accept things. You you question things. And people have gotten to that point where they just get spoon fed by the media and their and their leaders and they they support it. I mean, even punk nowadays. How could you call that punk when you just like, yeah, the government, get your shot, wear your mask. Yeah. Everybody's a racist. It's like, you know, force these values of the government sticking down your throats. And that's not punk. Punk was always like questioning everything. Yeah. And, 
you know, I was even fine with the covers. We knew the name was going to trigger Infidel and then, you know, Reich. Yeah. Uh, even though them, the, the description of those isn't anything offensive. It's just what you make of it. All the imagery was militant, but none, none was German at all. If you look yeah. at the weapons and the tanks and the uniforms, none were German. And we always would get, there are Nazi covers with Nazi this. So that's like, well, if you looked at the one, it's a British uniform. If you looked at this one, this tank isn't that. And it's judging a book by its cover and, yeah. and just automatically assuming. And all the lyrics dealt with things that were happening, things that, you know, some people go, you're anti this or you're anti that. It's like, you know, if we talked about Islam, it was about terrorists. I don't care if someone is Islam. I mean, that's their priority. I mean, their right. prerogative to be what they want when you forced your culture and beliefs down people's throats and like kill people yeah i do have a problem with that that's what yeah. certain songs were about songs that like conditioning uh it, it was just questioning it was using topics that people didn't want to discuss and want to sweep under the table and that last album literally got shelved because most distributors didn't want to carry it. And the label got threatened by Bandcamp. If they put it out, they were going to take all their releases out on Bandcamp. So we kind of, it sucks because the album didn't get out that much, but we're also proud that we did that. And we actually made that much of a reaction of just speaking the truth. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Oh, it, it worked. It worked. I mean, for example, when that first came out, the first EP, I had gotten it and I was showing some of the other friends and one guy I showed it to, he hadn't listened to it. I just showed it. Hey man, check this out. It's got guys from Asheron and his fix. He looked at the covers. He goes, well, I guess they don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> Cause he just automatically thought it was like some, I mean, he, not that he was offended. He thought it was funny, but he thought it was a racist album. He said, well, I guess they don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but then he, he didn't listen to it. It just saw the cover of it. But that's most people see that and they automatically think one thing versus another. Right. Right. And it's, I always say, if you want to criticize something, fine, but read what you're criticizing. Yeah. Go through. You can say, hey, that name is fucking ridiculous. Hey, fine. If you think that, but read the lyrics and then tell me then, are they really that? or? Or are they just speaking, like talking about topics that no one wants to talk about? Right. And like I said, we, we meant to stir the pot. We did. We're not, not surprised. And, uh, you know, maybe when things die down and people open their mind a little bit, maybe we'll get back together to, you know, record something else. But I, I think our point was made that you can get canceled and basically, not have your stuff out there and there is no freedom of speech when it comes to that or expression yeah yeah it just seems to kind of counter it. it it just seems like it counters the whole metal ethos of you know free speech say what you want offend people but now people even people in the metal scene are crying and policing things so to speak oh this is so evil i like this certain band but i think they're racist so i can't listen to them Damn. I don't even see how you can be so fucking weak like that. Cause again, like I said, I listen to bands that are of all political spectrums and I don't let them affect me. If there's something mm -hmm. I, I don't agree with, if it's a good band, I'll, I'll listen to it. Not, not going to be fucking weak minded. Oh my God. If I listen to this, I might go out and if I listen to the, a band, a gore grind band, I might go out and start killing people. No, not it's like the music. Right. Ugh, I, I, don't think, I don't think most fans in general like <laughs> let bands control their thoughts anyway so oh. as, as, as long as you have an open mind and like like i said if you don't like it just don't listen to it, it i mean when people go after like bands and they would try to make shit up you think marty had any problems getting all that fucking publicity they fucking got for that shit oh yeah they get free promotion they always said yeah. you know any press is good press so they just hype up these bands and stuff. So it is what it is. Well, at least the thing about it, they just 
roll with it and kind of whatever. And then they didn't come out and start crying. And I'm so sorry if I offended somebody with some imagery. No, fuck that. If you don't like it, go fuck yourself. And at least they, from what I understand, what I saw, they didn't come out and apologize for nothing because they didn't do anything, nothing yeah. to apologize for. Yeah. And, you know, and then the other side of the coin, you know, I remember when Asheron got accused of that shit for, for images we used. And I made a response going, you know, basically saying Asheron's a satanic band. It always has been. We never did this. And some people go, why did you defend yourself? It's like, I wasn't defending. I was making a statement that don't call me something if I'm not, because I am more than happy to let you know what I believe. You know, right. it's like I'm not doing some hiding and secret like stuff. I was just making it known. It's like, no, that has nothing to do with, you know, that type of stuff. And this is what the band has always been about. You know, you can't win any, you can't either side of the coin, you can't win. So, yeah. Actually, that reminds me of something else too. It was an interview you did. It was, uh, it was many years ago. It was on that, uh, black metal documentary that that Bill Zabub made. Yeah. And, uh, they were talking, asking different bands about, uh, NSBM and white power shit or something. And, and everybody on there was just, well, I don't like, they just kind of dance around the question. And, and your response was, I enjoyed it because you said, well, I, I can't pair quote you exactly, but you said something along the lines of, well, if someone's talking about white pride, they do it in an educated way, then I have no problem with it. It's in a, in a educated way and not just about hate. It, it, that wasn't your exact words, but it was something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's, that's a good answer. You know, not being some fucking pussy. Oh, I'm scared of that. You know, if somebody talks about it, it's in a uh, intelligent way and not just about hate or something. I mean, it, I think that was a really good uh, response. Yeah, it's, you know, if obviously if you're just going to like, if you're going to put something out and you want to put your beliefs out, at least put it out there either completely ridiculous where people aren't going to take it serious anyway, yeah. or at least be educated about it. You know, and I wasn't stating that, you know, I'm standing behind everything that. Oh, yeah, like yeah. That. Yeah. I know. But I was just saying that, you know, if if someone if that's someone's belief, that's their right to you know put that stuff out there. I just I just always found it just weird that you know different races are allowed to embrace their heritage, and then it seems like people of European descent are the bad guys, you know. And and I mean, there's bands that just talk about paganism or they talk about you know Viking and they're getting labeled as NSBM. Yeah. It's it's just stupid, you know? Yeah. Bands that are fucking racist and they are very fucking open about it and stuff. Right. So it just comes to the point where it's like, you know, people need to read lyrics and, and make judgments on reality, not what they want their answer to be. If you know what I mean. Yeah. If I don't like if I don't like you and I go, well, guess what? He has a skull on his hat. So the Nazis use that. And you know what? He must be a Nazi. Yeah. You know, that's stupid. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's, uh, you know, just going back to the uh, old punk days of how a lot of the punks used to wear swastikas, Sid Vicious and Susie and the Banshee. She would wear that shit. It was not anything about <laughs> national socialism. It was just more of a fuck you kind of uh thing. Yeah. But anyway. I think when the band's yeah, well, I think when the bands used to use stuff like that, it was taking the power away from those symbols, if you know what I mean. It's yeah. like, it was just like, guess what? I can wear it. Big fucking deal. I don't fucking believe it and shit. And I think that's what the punks were kind of doing, kind of taking that power away from things like that. But yeah, it is what it is. And we know what we're about. We don't have to worry about that shit. But there's a lot of dumb people out there that fucking uh, are closed minded and don't look into the things they fucking talk shit about. Right. Yeah, it's absurd. Well, um, just one other quick topic going back about the horror real quick, and then we'll wrap this shit up. But uh, I know you're talking about anthologies and stuff like Creep Show. 
What did you, did you used to like the uh, early hammer, hammer horror and uh, a- Amicus stuff like Asylum and Tales from the Crypt, the originals? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, growing up on that shit, you know, it's, it's like amazing stuff. It's like, what was that stuff they, uh, I think Hammer put those out, the, the ones with Vincent Price and they were almost like horror comedies. Do you remember those? Yeah, I remember there was one with Vincent Price called The Comedy of Terrors. It had him it and, been, yeah. and Peter Lorre, and it was kind of an ensemble cast, and it was... Yeah. Yeah, it, and that shit was legitimately funny. I mean, yeah. it, it was fucking funny. Yeah. I mean, all the all the Hammer stuff is just, like, classic stuff. I mean, Christopher Lee is Dracula. Yes. Oh, my God. That was... He was the best Dracula ever. <laughs> he sure. was. Absolutely. And then uh, Peter Cushing as Van Helsing and Dr. Frankenstein. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that actually, it's funny. These days, I find myself going back watching that stuff more than a lot of the gory shit that's uh, more yeah. modern. Or even eight, 80s was a good time, but I find myself going back watching all that shit. And then the uh, that anthology, it was, I think Amicus put it out. It was that uh, Asylum. It had Peter Cushing on there, and they would, that doctor wrote each patient's cell and each one had a different story and I just mm-hmm. love that shit man it's quality stuff yeah, yeah creep show and uh tales from the crap tales from the dark side all those type of things uh i like even uh all hallows eve that was yeah that was a yeah. compilation of uh different stories yeah i always found that stuff fascinating like i don't know if you remember the old series uh the night gallery yes uh, yes. I love that. That was a classic series. <clears throat> yeah, that was very good. And also something else to a lesser degree was Monsters. It was anthology, but it was all it was just called Monsters. It was very cheap ass shit though, but oh, I don't think I've seen cool. that one. I'll check that yeah, out. Yeah, it, it wasn't as popular as Night Gallery and all that stuff. It was uh mid to late 80s, kind of cheap shit, but but yeah, mm-hmm. Night Gallery and I even like the Twilight Zone and uh Original, oh, yeah. uh, outer, outer limits. Outer, yep, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, those, those are stuff that you, definitely in my youth that you know, Twilight Zone especially. Uh, I love their the, the stories on there. And then you know, in the eighties, they even had like the Friday the Thirteenth series with the different yeah. stories. And, yeah, uh, I think even Freddy, Freddy Krueger had one on there. I can't yeah, remember Fre- Freddy's. Nightmares or something. Yeah, Freddy's Nightmares. Yeah. Actually, I like Freddy's Nightmares because at least Freddy Krueger was involved in it sometimes. But the uh, Friday the 13th series, it was a cool concept in that antique store or whatever. But yeah, I was pissed off because there was nothing to do with Crystal Lake or Friday or Jason. That's right. Yeah. It was good, though, but it, it was uh, kind of a turnoff at, at first. Right. And then, I mean, you know... And then there's stuff like, you know, the X-Files that I really liked, you know, I thought they had some cool stories on there that dealt with like kind of true stories that, you know, people come up with and yeah. like it's pretty interesting. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. I, I, I love those anthology films like that, or even uh, Black Sabbath, the original old one with uh, Boris Karloff. Karloff, yeah. Yeah, great, yeah. great shit, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I mean, this right here, we could talk about it another hour for this shit. That's for damn sure. But right. uh guess we'll wrap this up. It's been a little almost an hour and a half, but but uh, I think we've covered some pretty interesting topics. You've brought up some stuff uh, about Asheron. I think people would be uh, interested to hear. And uh as far as the uh, Asheron series you're going to start doing, when do you think the first episode will come out? Uh It probably won't be out for a while because I don't want to rush it and I'm yeah. going to try to get in touch with like all the people I can for uh, that were involved at the time. So it'll probably take a few months for that to get the first one out. And then like probably start banging them out after that. But uh, I'll still be doing the Q and A's. I'll do some other stuff too. Uh, maybe some other topics like, you know, horror or the occult or whatever I feel like doing at the time. Well, we got a, lo- a long lineage of stuff to talk about. So <clears throat> I'm sure you'll have a lot of cool uh, topics coming up. But, uh, yeah, hey, 
It's been a uh, good conversation. Talk about some cool stuff. Maybe do another collaboration down the road. Talk about Absolutely. some other shit. And, uh, Absolutely. And uh, by the way, I, I did want to mention that uh, you gave me all this time. I, I am definitely a fan of the band. And I think you guys are doing a hell of a job. Um, I don't take to a lot of newer bands that, you know, I'm, I usually stick to the old stuff I listen to. I listen to bands nowadays. But you guys have a killer sound. You have a, a good vibe to you. The, the 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 aggressive spirits there, and uh, best of luck to you, man. I fucking I think you guys deserve it. Cool, I appreciate that. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that everybody in the band is either in their mid to late forties. There's no young mm -hmm. people in the band, so I think that's why a lot of the old school ethos, so to speak, is in the band because there's no young fucking pussies in here so i think that's why a lot of it and plus the fucking attitude and fuck you kind of shit i think people are it resonates with people because pe people are tired of this shit of people crying about things and stuff so i think that's why it's uh i don't want to say it's taken off but people are enjoying it so I i'm happy about that right on all right, well, cool. We'll uh, we'll be in touch, and uh, we're gonna sign off. Everybody else, go take a look at that fucking Vincent Crowley shit. Make sure you watch his fucking videos and other than that. Go fuck yourself.